Let's motivate the graph partitioning problem through a different problem. Suppose I want to multiply a sparse matrix A times a vector x. Remember the duality between matrices and graphs, meaning this sparse matrix has this equivalent graph representation. The rows and corresponding columns of the matrix are vertices, and the non-zeros are edges. One way to do a distributed breadth-first search is to use a computational primitive that looks like this linear algebra operation. Now, suppose you decide to distribute the work by first dividing the matrix row-wise. You would then assign block rows to processes. Note that this assignment corresponds to a partitioning of the graph. This example is a vertex-based, or just vertex, partition. Observe that this partitioning usually also implies a partitioning of the vectors, x and y. That's because there's a one-to-one -one mapping of vector entries to graph vertices. Now, the amount of work in a sparse matrix vector multiply is proportional to the number of non-zeros. So, when you divide up the rows, you might want to do so in a way that balances the number of matrix non-zeros per partition. So that's one goal. Now, you have another goal in choosing a partition. Hmm, what is that goal? Recall that the vertex x is partitioned. Now, suppose you want to update the first block of y. Because of these non-zeros, you're going to need these corresponding elements of x. That requires communication with the processes that own these elements of x. In the language of graphs, these communication exchanges happen any time an edge crosses a process boundary. For instance, these two non-zeros correspond to this edge. The two processes that own the endpoints of the edge will need to communicate. This observation suggests a second goal. To minimize communication volume, you prefer to reduce the number of edge cuts. This example motivates the classic graph partitioning problem. You're given a graph and a target number of partitions as input. Your goal is to divide the vertices into, say, p partitions. You'd like this partitioning to have the following properties. First, these partitions should cover all the vertices, but should be disjoint. The partition should also be about equal in size, and the number of cut edges should be minimized. That is the graph partitioning problem in a nutshell.